Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Prospect State University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the reactions of thiols, in particular, the use of thiols as nucleophiles and also the redox reactions of thiols. So thiols make pretty good nucleophiles and can react with uh, a variety of electrophiles and usually uh, SN2 type reactions. So for example, ethane thiol can react with one bromopropane in an SN2 mechanism. And that would generate initially be, uh, a protonated sulfide because we used uh, the thiol as a neutral nucleophile and something's going to need to come and take away that extra proton. So let's use the bromide anion. I know the bromide anion is not a really very strong base, but the thiol or the protonated sulfide is not a very good, not a very, uh, it's a pretty strong acid, so I think we can handle this. We're also going to get HBr out of this reaction. Now, uh, in general, for this kind of reactions, a lot of folks will first deprotonate the thiol using an appropriate base like sodium hydroxide. Thiols, remember, are relatively acidic. pKa is around uh, 10 pKa units for most thiols. Now I have a base Right now I have the thiolate anion, and uh, if the thiol is a good nucleophile, then the thiolate anion is a better nucleophile, but it also avoids the neutral nucleophile generating acid kind of problem. And so the product of the reaction of a thiol with an alkyl halide is a sulfide, um, and this is one way that we can make sulfides. And I'll have a, another video coming up uh, about the synthesis of sulfides. We'll talk about a couple of other ways because since this is an SN2 method, it's going to suffer from all of the same uh, issues that SN2 reactions tend to. Thiols also can behave as nucleophiles with other kinds of electrophiles. So let's look at, um, you know, let's use a different thiol. and deprotonate my, our thiol to make it a better uh, nucleophile. And then let's react this thiol with a different kind of an electrophile, like an epoxide. So once again, after the thiol is deprotonated, now it is a, a better nucleophile. And as a basic nucleophile, it's going to attack epoxides Again, this is an SN2 mechanism um, for the ring opening of the epoxide, and it's going to attack at the less substituted spot like uh, other strong nucleophiles will tend to do. And generate um, you know, this uh, sulfide alcohol product. Thiols can react as nucleophiles with other kinds of electrophiles and reactions that aren't SN2 reactions. So um, in my video sequence and in the course I teach, the reactions of uh, carboxylate or carboxyl uh, functional groups like the acid chlorides are later on in my, my course, but other electrophiles like this can react. And so you can react thiols with acid chlorides and get thioesters. And, and I can potentially you know, think of other kinds of electrophiles that thiols can react with. The second type of, of uh, chemical behavior I want to talk about for thiols are redox reactions. And there are two primary types of redox reactions. And one is for the oxidation of thiols to disulfides. The disulfide is an important uh, sulfur-containing functional group, especially 
in uh, biochemistry uh, and structural biology. It helps hold uh, the tertiary structures of proteins together. Uh, and there's a video coming up on the, the chemistry of disulfides in general. This is a reaction that uh, requires two equivalents of thiol and a mild oxidizing agent. And so uh, let's do this a different way. There we go. Like bromine. And so from a, a balanced chemical equation standpoint, need these be bromines, not borons. From a balanced chemical equation standpoint, uh, we get the thiols reacting to form the sulfide, and the bromines end up as hydrogen bromide. And given that thiols are pretty good nucleophiles, and in other reactions, we have talked about the ability of bromine, even though it's a relatively nonpolar, to be an electrophile, we can imagine a mechanism for this reaction. I get my arrow here. That starts off with a nucleophilic attack of the sulfur at bromine. want that plus charge there. And then um, since we know we're making hydrogen bromide, let's deprotonate then this intermediate. And now we can have an uh, we have another molecule of thiol that can react uh, as a nucleophile and displace the bromine. So we actually need to have nucleophilic attack at sulfur. There we go. Off goes the bromine. And then once again, we have this extra proton on the sulfur. And we have a bromide anion ready to remove it. And so then that gets us our disulfide and, and the two equivalents of HBr. Disulfides are, again, important uh, structures in, in biochemistry, but they have other uses, and there's a video coming up on the uh, reactions of disulfides as well. The final type of uh, redox reaction that I want to talk about, or the oxidation of thiols that I want to talk about, is the oxidation of thiols to sulfonic acids. So thiols can also uh, oxidize to sulfonic acids. I am less certain of what this mechanism might be, so I'm not going to try. Um, This oxidation to sulfonic acids requires a stronger oxidizing agent like hydrogen peroxide, and we need uh, three equivalents of it. So we could probably end up balancing this equation based on we know that we have three equivalents of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, each one's going to be responsible for one of these oxygens, and the rest of it probably is water. And, and I will include uh, sulfonic acids in their reactions also in an upcoming video. Right. So uh, this concludes my video on the reactions of, of thiols. Remember, we talked about thiols as nucleophiles, uh, and we talked about their uh, ability to be oxidized into other sulfur functional groups. Thank you for watching.